plaintiff, Mary Lynn Maitland, says the defendant is her neighbor. And after he introduced her to pot, they often smoked up to four joints a day. However, Mary Lynn is suing him today for his stolen money and a loan. Defendant Robert Tenner says when he and Mary Lynn met, they bonded because they have a lot in common, including that they like to travel. However, Robert claims Mary Lynn is constantly canceling vacation plans on him, and he's fed up. Start with you. Bob and I have known each other for five years. We um, were neighbors, and we got to know each other um, by partaking in marijuana smoking. <laughs> right. And um, What state you all in? Massachusetts. Was it legal then, recreational? It is. Was it five years ago? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> and it's curious. I mean, I'm not going to prosecute you. I oh. think that, you know, marijuana should have been legal. I think people who smoked and got tickets think they should be dismissed retroactively. Y'all going to make it legal all of a sudden? All these people got records for smoking the joint, for having a little bag of weed. Now suddenly it's legal, but people who had that bag of weed or that joint years ago when they got caught. Mm-hmm. So I believe it should be retroactive. Bob and I have known each other for five years. We um, were neighbors and we got to know each other by partaking in marijuana smoking. <laughs> all right. And um, what state you all in? Massachusetts. Was it legal then? Recreational? It is. Was it five years ago? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> Defendant Robert Tanner is being sued by his friend, who claims she and Robert enjoy smoking pot together and often smoke up to four joints a day. Were y'all weed heads or weed smokers? Well, I didn't smoke until I met my friend here. I know, but did y'all become weed heads? <laughs> yes, we have. How often? <laughs> How many joints y'all smoke a day? About four. Oh, yeah, y'all weed heads. Every yeah. day you smoke four joints. Yes, sir. Yeah, y'all. <laughs> I'll be honest, sir. We 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 we've known each other for five years, and we and we have a lot of, in common besides marijuana. We like to travel. We like to say we're the same age, right? And we get along together well. And with this money um, that she supposedly lent me, well, back, we're gonna let her tell me about that first. Okay. But you're saying you all have been friends. Yes. yes. And how close do you live together? I may have missed half that. an hour. Half an hour? Just about a half an hour. Well, it was your friendship based on, I thought maybe it was living next to each other. It was. We were. We okay. were. Then moved. All yes. right. Yeah. Got it. That's what I we thought. We stayed friends after we moved. Good. Right. Yeah. Right. All right. And yeah. The yeah. Weed heads. That's the basis of the offer. <laughs> I hate admitting that, sir, but yes. All right. That's the first step in recovery. If you want to recover. <laughs> That's right. And I'm not going to force people who smoke a weed to, into recovery. I am going to advise you to just use casually. Otherwise, four joints every day is an addiction. <laughs> and any type of addiction is no good, right. whether it's marijuana, whether it's sex, whether it's gambling, certainly we know hardcore narcotics isn't good for you. So that's my only advice is it's the same thing I would tell people who drink alcohol. Don't drink it every day. I ain't, because you're alcoholic then. Thank you. So socially drink, socially smoke. Um, smoking too much weed, I believe it's going to take your memory away a little bit. Oh, yeah. Hurt my memory. After all my childhood years of smoking, I think it has. And uh, I've seen other, that's been my observation with others. When they smoke weed excessively over several years, particularly science says when you do it when you're younger, it affects your memory in some way. And so you look like you started about 15. You're correct, sir. Right on the dot. I'm right on the dot. You are. What do I get? I, I'm going to start thinking. Intuitive. Yeah. Start to set up a what do you call those things? Yeah. Psychic That's thing. Right. Psychic, psychic phenomenon. <laughs> I'm yes. serious. Yeah, I got everything. We can take the clips of the stuff I do in here. <laughs> when I hit it right on the target, just like that, you start smoking weed. I should have did like that. I should have did my face like that. <laughs> like, like, like you started smoking weed at 15. <laughs> <laughs> I did. How did you know that? Then you met a neighbor later on in life. And I turned her on to it too, yeah. <laughs> How did you know that? <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Uh, that's funny, though, sir. And tell me about the money you're suing him for. He wanted to explain, but you tell me. Well, um, we were going to go on vacation. So I took out 4000 out of the bank, and I gave it to Bob to hold so I wouldn't spend the money. And um, I believe he put half of it in the bank and put half of it on his bookshelf in the living room. I think that's what he did. Why do you say on the bookshelf of all places? <laughs> I think that's what he did. I, 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 as I you recall. You psychic too. You're like me. As I recall. That you saw him, you think? Yes. Oh, okay. I thought you were just suggesting that that's where you, what you oh, believe. Oh, no, no. Where I saw, you I believe saw him put it there. I saw him put it there. And it was your money? Ye well, yes, but I had given it to him to hold. And he gave me, he wrote a check for $2,000 and gave me half of it back. But he told me he was going to buy furniture with the other half. And um, I don't know, he, he ended up not doing that. And um, you'd probably have to ask him what he did with the money. Okay. When was he supposed to pay you? Uh, um, well, I, I, right then, I mean, I wanted him to give me all the money back because we didn't go on but vacation. When he didn't that day, did you all further discuss when he would? Not a lot. I mean, when he didn't give it back to me, I kind of just let it go at the time. And um, the $800 is about... Uh, that's the loan? That's the loan. Um, uh, his money would have got lost in the mail, and he that was his rent. And so I helped him out with that and some utilities. That's what the $800 is. And he was supposed to pay me that back. Sir? She's correct on uh, most of it. The um, trip to Las Vegas money, the $2,000 that I paid back. Um, y'all really need to stop smoking so much weed. Seriously, y'all come across like stoners. I agree. Oh. I, I knew I would come across that way, and I'm embarrassed. Okay. I Don't am. You know. I am uh, embarrassed. <laughs> no, don't be embarrassed. I am, don't, sir. Stoners are not as bad as crackheads and dope feeds. Well, you're, only, you're one step under, yeah, but... I'm, step, you know, I'm, not, I'm not too far, you know, removed. <laughs> I understand that. Defendant Robert Tanner is being sued by his friend, who claims she and Robert enjoy smoking pot together and often smoke up to four joints a day. Go ahead, sir. My, my, Tell my, me my about point the was, um, she gave me the... The four thousand dollars, and I, I gave her two thousand back, and I was f off because she had canceled so many trips in the past, and I said I was keeping the money to teach her a lesson. To be honest, are you kidding me? No, I'm not. <laughs> you keep her money to keep to teach her a lesson. <laughs> it was wrong. In fact, it's illegal. You could go to jail. Acknowledging that this is her money, but I'm not giving it to her because I just don't feel like I should do it. Don't feel like doing it. I don't want to do it. I don't like the way she talk. Well, I don't like the way she walk. Well, I don't like the way she dress. Well, I don't like the way she talk to me. Well, I don't want to. That's none of those are legal defense. That's punishment. You're punishing the woman for not being how you want her to be. And you're punishing her to the tune of $2,000. Now, what about the 800 for the loan? Um, the 800 for the loan, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest on that, too. I didn't realize that I owed her the money until she brought it to my attention that she helped me pay back my rent money. Okay, and then I, maybe I shouldn't even mention it today. She may have forgotten like you forgot. We all smoke so much weed. Yes. You say you forgot you owed her. Yes, I did. And if she, if I didn't mention it today when I introduced the lawsuit, she might have forgot that you owed her. I was hoping. You must have been off weed a couple of days. Her <laughs> memory is working well today. <laughs> when the 800 is your judgment, he uh, is a good enough guy to admit everything. Uh, the only uh, difference we have here is that he was uh, being unfair and acting obviously in a retaliatory manner and you can't take it upon yourself to not pay a debt in retaliation. Have a good day. That's it for the plaintiff. You're still my best friend. Well, 
I think you got away with $2,800. I don't think I owed you quite that much, but I respect the judge and I respect you. I love you like a sister, so, you know, that's why I admitted everything.